Uh, it's pretty, yeah, pretty incredible matches so far. We hope you're enjoying us here, uh, enjoying with us here in the ESL arena, and also those of you joining us on Halo Channel and Twitch.tv slash Halo. Hope you're enjoying this pre-launch tournament action here with Halo 5 Guardians. What an incredible match we just saw. Both teams back and forth exchanging kill counts and leads. Um, Right here, Ace, uh, incredible performance from him in Game 2. Uh, Riot's going to need to step it up if they want to take Game 3, of course, but it's going to come down to overshot control on Empire. You see how important it is in these maps uh, just to control that power up and keep an eye on that shotgun. Uh, but Ace, look at that play he had last game, shutting down Chalky's shotgun. Some way, somehow, stays alive with that little bit of spray and pray and the melee to close it out. I have no idea how he managed to land that. That was, that was using thrust to its full potential there. Game-changing abilities moving forward as Ace and the rest of the team, Maniacs and big players from him as they move forward to Game 3. The uh, You've got to ask yourself though, coming off of this, the games are now neck and neck. Pressure is on both teams after this game. One of them unfortunately will be leaving the competition. However, we're going back to Empire where... Anything can happen. Th 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 anything can happen, but they were rather dominant in most of the points. But then again, you know, we saw them. They were six. <laughs> a little cheeky smile there from Riots on screen. The scores 50 to 41. Optic Gaming laying down the hammer and fighting back with a little bit of an answer back from the first game, which was 50 to 44. And I have to say, we have to remind you at home that Optic Gaming was down in that match 6 to 0. Yeah. Right? That is not an easy way to start a Team Slayer match when you are losing 6 to 0. Another mistake can quite literally cause you the match. If you get spawn trapped, if you start to let the other team start to cycle that OS, the game is over for you. But Team Captain Flamesword waiting in the attic with the SMG, using the ground pound, and slowly they climbed back, right? That is a, it's a new Optic Gaming. We didn't see much of that in Season 1 of the HCS. We start to see a little bit better performances from them in Season 2, but now we're really starting to see some disciplined play from those veterans, right? They've been on this maid stage many times before. They know how to come back in the match, and they prove that no matter how many kills you might be down by, you can always rally back. And then they turn that around, and they win 50 to 41. So we're going back to Empire for game number three. Walsh, he called it season two finals. Release the the release the SQ. Get a time machine. Go back. We know uh, we know Optic Gaming can do this. They've been in this situation many times before at professional level. They've oh. won events. Ace missing the first clamber, but I believe, do you see the OS in play? Yeah, it's going to be too foxy. Ace misses that first jump, so it's going to be too foxy who grabs the first overshield, but it looks like he's going to get melted by Optic Gaming. Ace using the thruster again to get out of the way. 1-1 one, one, the score. He does finally go down as wow. we come back I mean, in with assault. Yeah, two foxy trying to make a bold play, right? Just trying to make something happen with that overshield, but Optic Gaming was waiting there. Three of them with their assault rifles out. Assault clambering up to T3 at the moment. Just looking for a player. Ramirez comes down with the big shotgun. Somehow assault manages to survive, throws a grenade in, throws a second one at the moment, whips out the AR, that's oh, oh. a massive grenade to get the kill, and more importantly, what, the shotgun. Uh, what a sign of a veteran player there, right? They've only been playing on these maps for the past three days, but already lining up perfect grenades off of the ceiling to predict where that shotgun player was going to go, but he finally falls as well, now over to two Foxy. 5-3 the score, a little two kill lead at the moment for Supremacy, as he's going to push up with that SMG, we know how powerful this weapon is, we've got SMG and shotgun up at the moment in T2, nobody wants to walk in here, otherwise they're going to get shut down instantly. Grenade goes in, just trying to feel out and get some hit markers there, see if anyone's downstairs. Goes down. OS has come up with Assault, but yep. it will get ripped off if these two weapons go neck and neck as he comes around this corner. We're to see Assault is actually off screen, trying to make a jump to T3. We're going to see, jump on board with him in a minute, and he is indeed pushing in, trying to cut away at the Supremacy lead. As he turns around, oh, and the my. shotgun says no, as Assault gets assaulted and does go down. That's going to be a shotgun there as well for them. At the moment, Foxy, B, R, and S, M, G, long range and short range, nobody can get close to him. That's right, and now Riots, his teammate, does have the shotgun in the first level of the tower, so they were able to shut down that overshield pretty well. So both teams uh, exchanging a little bit of overshield battles there, but Supremacy now coming out on top with a lead of 10 to 6, but they're starting to move around here. Look at Riots getting a little clever here, trying to push into the enemy spawn just a bit. However, two grenades go in. Even if they didn't kill him, they know he's there because the hit markers will say so. And you see Flamesaw come around, cleans him up. That's going to be this shotgun moving forward into their hands if they do pick it up. However, I don't think they've managed to see it, Bravo. And you know, if we learned anything from game two, it's that optic gaming, you can't count them out until the end. Looks like Ramirez, oh, he's going to be able to grab that. Where will that overshield fall? And I think we just saw a drop. It's going to be Ace once again. Ramirez not managing to clean it up. However, Riot's doing some good work to dodge a lot of bullets there and take off. It's completely, Ace picking up the
the double, but only just, to be honest with you, he did have the overshield completely ripped from his back at the moment in time, still somehow managing to stay alive. He absolutely adores this thruster pack at the moment, as another grenade comes in, does completely dodge it altogether. 11-13, as he pushes up into T2, he thinks somebody's here. Two people come around the corner, thrust back, grenade goes down, moves again, there's the hit marker, so he knows someone's damaged. Chalky jumps down, will he shut him down? Yes, he does indeed, as we move across to Chalky now, off the spawn. And I have to say, Optic Gaming did a really nice job of holding that down, but they will fall several players now. Look at the score. Supremacy goes up 17 to 11, so Ace grabbing that overshield seems to have only delayed the Supremacy map control. Supremacy are just holding down T3. It said before the game, you spoke to strong side. This is one of the strongest points on the map. A fresh OS has just popped up. I believe that's going in the hands at the moment of Optic Gaming. Throw something. In fact, I tell a lie. It wasn't. The OS has now come up. He did miss yep, that. That's going to be initially. A... It was actually a uh, Ramirez. Ramirez. Yeah, it's going to be a clean OS grab from Ramirez, but he gets assassinated there by Flame Sword. Big plays from him as he jumps on his back and snaps his neck. Oh, what a way to go down. You know, you can get a back whack, but getting the assassination is just embarrassing. Uh, that's going to be the OS completely ripped from him. Ace at the moment trying to push in and just do some damage. He's got support from his teammate in front. Maniac goes down, but just look at that score gap, Bravo. 15 to 23. Ace thrusting back, somehow managing to stay alive for just a split second longer, but did get cleaned up in the end. Assault actually falls as well to go back on board with Flamesword, but look at the score. Optic Gaming is down by eight. We're starting to reach uncomfortable territory for Optic. They cannot give up any more free kills here in this match. Remember, these were the highest seed coming into this. It's going to be Optic to its second seed at the moment, but it just doesn't look like it. 7.50 remaining on the clock. That's going to be Foxy. One shot. He gets cleaned up by Flamesword. And and let me tell you, what I'm worried about here is that... Ooh, a little bit of back whack there. It looks like he will fall but over to Chalky. What I'm worried is that Supremacy is going to start trading kills right now, and they're going to really rack up their kills. They're going to get really close to 50 towards the end of the game, but the Overshield has dropped, and it's in the hands of Ramirez. It was a 10-kill deficit. Now it's moved down to 9. Will it move to 10? Yes, it will indeed. Ramirez, as you mentioned, Bravo, perfectly. He went down, but he got the trade before. We now see Chalky decides to back off and leave that DMR up on T3 at the moment. Moving over across to Blue Courtyard as we see him just crouching, trying so, to get his shields back. Yeah, what we need to see here, once again, from Optic Gaming is they need to slow down the match. We saw them do it in game number two easily, but 10 kill lead here for Supremacy. That's nothing to laugh at. They have quite a margin on them. Whoever thought we would see this at the moment. The and Europeans doing the work. X Games come champions. They're pushing forward. Seven minutes on the clock. There's the beatdown from Chalky trying to jump up onto Sneaky. He's also got... No, he opts to not pick up the plasma caster. SMG. Instead, the SMG, SMG is right. SMG on this map. Instead, I think these players are just going to be more comfortable with that SMG. It's just so dead at close range. Uh, Chalky once again also using the thruster pack to get away from that ledge. 11 kill lead. Now as you mentioned, this is dangerous waters, but then again, oh. sword shows up. Chalky there, missing all the shots with the SMG, but we've got another every single time we see OS in the hands of Supremacy. There's the distraction medal now. Grenade goes in. No hit marker, so he didn't manage to clip anybody. Turns around. He's got support from his teammate there who's hiding up on red top at the moment, but I believe he's actually gone down, but bravo, look at that score gap. I mean, Supremacy, they're not only on top of the scoreboard, but they're also maintaining map control throughout. Take a look, 37 to 24, our Europeans right now, where they commanding lead. Look at the use of the thruster from Two Foxy. He's all over the place at the moment. Optic composure is just going out of the window as it's 40 to 26. Bravo. They are moments away from possibly being eliminated from Gamescom 2015. Ramirez, he's got full shield pushing in. You know for a fact he's going to be telling his teammates behind him. Push, 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 boys. We can clean these up. There's another kill for Ramirez. At the moment, they are completely dominating Optic Gaming. Will he get this kill? There's the thrust. Somehow survives and his teammate gives him support for yet another cleanup. Going to be looking for that overshield once again in another moment to see when that will drop, as that could definitely d decide who will come away here. And once again, it's two Foxy. Foxy doing serious work with this OS 42 to 28. They know that 44 now to 28. The damage that they are doing the green wall is falling brick by brick and piece by piece. They only need six more kills, five more kills now. There's another player. Four more kills. Oh. And two Foxy with the team back. Oh my god, the disrespect, Bravo. 
And our crowd likes a little bit of that. As you see, 46 to 28. Supremacy is only two kills away from sending Optic Gaming home back to the States. Looking now with the SMG jumping up, about to get, he's, he's, had, he's no shields and somehow survives with the thruster. Does go down, four kill game now. That's all they need. Riot's picking up the shotgun. We saw what damage he did previous on that last game with that thing at the moment. Uh, I mean, and I mean, this last overshot, of course, Sims really could decide uh, the last few moments. And, and by that, I just mean it will decide how fast Supremacy closes this match out. They have a huge 15 kill lead. What happened to Optic Gaming compared to the last game they were going into this with a win at the moment? We see a little thrust there to get out of the way. No kills, though. As we see, it's actually, it's actually the opposing team's getting the kills. Optic Gaming Foxy, at the I think back to back to back over shields for him here. They only need three more. Foxy going in. Will he get this kill? Of course he will. One more kill. And Optic Gaming are going to be going home. Foxy's going to just charge in. He's got himself an OS. He knows that they can't lose. All he needs is one kill. He just needs to find it. There it is. Will it be Maniac as he tries to run away? Nick. And yes, it is. Oh, my God. Optic Gaming lose. They are going back to the States. Supremacy take the first game and advance to the grand finals. Supremacy clutching it up there in game number three. They did not let up uh, throughout that entire series. Optic Gaming with a very, very strong game two. They rallied back just a bit in game number three, but it seemed like the pressure was just too strong from Supremacy. I do not believe what I'm seeing. These guys came in, they won the, uh, we did the seeding game, they took that. And that was struggling a little. That, that could have been the difference maker, right? They're yeah. Clutching up that third seed uh, is what forced them to play the second seed at Optic Gaming. Uh, undoubtedly, that's who they would have preferred to play as a result. And now uh, they have advanced in a grueling best of three. So now Supremacy guaranteeing themselves second place. Commiserations to Optic Gaming. People in the crowd, please, can you give a big round of applause for Optic Gaming? <laughs> they showed up at Supremacy. I, I mean... I would say, is this all about keeping you cool, do you think? Is, do you think that the pressure of America being on the shoulders just, just uh, too know, much? I, I don't think that's what it is. I, I think in game two, we saw that they can keep cool, right? They have no problem doing that. They can slow the game down to their pace, but I think in game number three, Supremacy's control was just too strong. When you see a single player grabbing back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back overshields, if not more, right, that's an indicator that Supremacy just had way too much map control. We saw some excellent work. The thing that scared me on the Supremacy side was every time we saw them grab that overshield and they swooped around the outside, side two players coming in right there's Every two time. players they're finishing with the assault rifles when you put two assault rifles or heaven forbid an assault rifle and an smg on a player yeah. they're going to go down so fast and of course supremacy knew that they paired that with the overshield i have to say though in game number three we saw a big os grab from ace yeah. slow the game down right they were able to only be down by about three kills or so uh but instead supremacy's pressure was just too great we saw glimpses of perfection even at the start you know we saw assault with the grenade takes down the shotgun guy straight away they had the control but they just locked down i have to give big big credit to, to uh, Foxy for that OS control. Yeah, yeah I mean, back, you see it with three times. Back keep to in mind, back? these players, these at this invitational, these teams are playing without coaches, right? Yeah. So these players are timing those overshields themselves. So two Foxy and crew were undoubtedly on top of that. And not only were they on top of the timing, but it takes talent for when you're coming off of the respawn to always be in place for the overshield, right? Yeah. You, you need to really be focused on it, and that's exactly what they're able to do. All right then, guys. I believe we have an interview ready on the floor with one of one of America's and one of England's and one of the most known American within England. I've, I've completely mixed my word up. <laughs> you know what? We're going to throw it down to the floor for an interview. <laughs> All right, Chalky. How are you feeling right now? I'm still pretty shook up, to be honest. Um, I'm so proud of literally what they were capable of, and literally, it felt like they were carrying me through the series. I was really nervous throughout the whole thing, and. Uh, to see these guys on my side, that level-headed, and to be that level-headed against a lineup like that is amazing to see. What was your strategy going into this? Um, well, like I said, we had kind of limited practice. We didn't practice against Optic even slightly. Um, so we kind of had to sit behind them, pick up what they'd picked up, obviously from Seattle and this event, and um, just develop our, our in-game knowledge previously and try and develop it. So. Well, congratulations. We'll see you in the next one. Guys, we have a very special trip.